The first thing you have to do is remove the basket and the chute. The next thing you need to do is lower the cutting unit. Now locate the four screws securing the two pulley guards. The two on the right hand side from the driver's point of view are here and here. The two on the left hand side are here and here. It is possible to remove them with a 10 millimeter spanner but the job is awkward. What you really need is one of these Torx keys. It makes the job a lot easier. Now remove the pulley guards, the right one and the left one. Now's your chance to do a bit of spring cleaning. Next, we have to disengage the pulley belt by slackening the tension with a steel bar. You can do this by wedging the end of the bar against this pulley support. Now disengage the belt from the pulley on the left hand side of the machine. Back on the right side now, with some fiddling to disengage the belt from the clutch pulley, you should be able to remove it altogether. <laughs> Next we have to start detaching the cutting unit from the tractor by removing five retaining clips. One is here on the right hand side, another is here opposite on the left hand side, a third is here on the right hand side at the front, a fourth is here opposite on the left hand side, and the last one is here again on the left hand side. First remove the two on the right hand side of the machine, Then the two opposite them on the left hand side. <laughs> Lastly, the third clip by the left rear wheel. Now we can free the cutting unit from the tractor. First, the left front. Next, the right front. Now left rear. Right rear. Finally, the last one by the left rear wheel. The cutting unit may now be withdrawn from underneath the tractor. You can get some real cleaning done now.
Next, turn the unit over to get at the blades. We're looking at the unit from the opposite side now. The right hand cutting blade is on the right. It is fixed in place by a 15 mm bolt with a left hand thread. Turn it clockwise to loosen it. Then remove the bolt and the two washers. The bolt retaining the left hand blade has a conventional right hand thread. Turn it anti-clockwise to loosen it. Remove the bolt and the washers. Note that the spindle hole of the right hand blade is shaped like a six point star, while the one on the left hand blade is shaped like a five point star, so that you can't confuse them. Remove the blades. Time for some cleaning again. Note the six point star shape. This is the right hand blade. The five star shape denotes the left hand blade. There are two edges to grind on each blade. You could do the job with a metal file, but it would be time consuming. To get it done quickly, you need a grinder equipped with a grinding disc. The blade needs to be immobilized for sharpening. Clamping it to the edge of a workbench works for me. Again, the edges to grind. First edge. Grind in the direction of the bevel. And now, with the blade turned round, the second edge. Now for the second blade. You'll need to start from the end of the blade this time, so that you can continue to grind in the direction of the bevel. To do the second edge, you'll need to turn the blade around. Returning now to the cutting unit, we get into some really serious cleaning. We're now ready to reassemble. Six star right hand blade here. And five star left hand blade here. Note that the curved ends are pointing down.
Now replace the flat washers. And the lock washers. Next, the bolts. The one with the left hand thread goes here, and you turn it anti clockwise to tighten it. The bolt with the right hand thread goes here, and you turn it clockwise to tighten it. Get them nice and tight. Now turn the cutting unit over. It is now ready to be reinstalled on the tractor. First, push it into position underneath. Reinstallation is a reversal of the deinstallation procedure. Start by lining up the two rear lugs with the holes in the suspension arms. Now make sure the lifting mechanism is in its lowest position. Insert a screwdriver under the cutting unit to act as a lever for lifting. Now, levering the screwdriver with one hand, Use the other as a guide to lift the right rear of the cutting unit and engage the lug in the hole in the suspension arm. Do the same on the left hand side of the machine. Next, do the right front one. The left front one. and the last one by the left rear wheel, which, on experience, I decided should have been done first. Lastly, reinsert all the clips. Some of them need to be tapped in. Now check the lifting mechanism. Next we're in for a lot of fiddling to get the pulley belt on. The belt has to go around the clutch pulley, located here, and the back of it runs against this guide pulley, not shown in the diagram. Start by looping the belt round the pulley on the left side, and then push the slack through to the other side. Now loop the belt round the clutch pulley. Working from the right hand side now, loop the back of the belt around the center pulley. There are three pulleys on the right hand side. Loop the belt round the inside rear one. Use a stick of wood or tool to take up any slack on the belt. Now you have to loop the belt round the outside rear pulley, which is spring tensioned. For this, you will need the steel bar again. 
Insert the end of the bar to the left of the tensioning pulley support and underneath the spring. Thrust the bar forward enough to get a solid purchase on the inside pulley support. Now move the tensioning pulley to the right by moving the bar with one hand and use the other to loop the belt round the tensioning pulley. But be careful of your fingers. That spring is vicious. That completes the cutting unit reinstallation. It only remains now to replace the pulley guards and the machine will be ready for spring.